Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. My dear wonderful people, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. No human has an excuse on the day of al qiyamah as to why they didn't do what they were supposed to do, i.e. obey Allah. In most times when we hear obey Allah, we just think about salat and doing zakat and siyam and fasting and that's it. Well, actually it's not. These are the relationships between you and Allah. The five pillars of Islam is the relationship between you and Allah. And so are the six pillars of faith. Islam is when you are walking down the street and you see a can in the pathway, you remove it. That's Islam. Islam is if you are driving your car, you respect the speed limits. That's Islam. Islam is speaking the truth when you are asked to or even when you are not asked to and so on and so forth. But all these goodies that happen to us in our life, they all get taken away from us in a very sneaky, tricky way by a shaitan who is our nemesis. He is our very, very nemesis. There is not one ayah in Al-Quran or two or three or four. There are plenty of the ayat in Al-Quran where Allah Taala pinpoints to us, be careful of a shaitan. He is your enemy treat him as one in the second world war when england had an enemy germany and germany had an enemy england both parties took seriously this warning and this information the british people didn't say you know what that is a joke the german are not our enemies that people are saying they are our enemy but actually there has been a battle and a world widespread battle when allah tells us that a shaitan is our enemy enemy what part of our enemy we're not getting what part of he is our enemy that we muslims fail today to understand when he did not want to prostrate to our father adam do you think he did it like out of okay i just not feel good today i don't feel like in the frame of mind to make it no a shaitan as i said many times he was present when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed our father Adam with his own blessed hand subhanahu wa ta'ala. A shaitan knew that Allah was about to create a new creation. A shaitan knew and he looked at the different stages by which the body of our father Adam went through. Land plus water and then dried water and things like that, pottery and so on and so forth. Until that fateful Jumu'ah day, that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summoned all the angels. A shaitan, as I said earlier on, did not have anything from the angels. He didn't hear anything from the angels that was special about his birth, the way Allah created him. They didn't tell him, oh, you know what, the day you were born, Allah did this, nothing, nothing. So a shaitan was really, really curious about this new creation, what it is that is so special about this person here. Why would Allah says in Nijailu fil ardi khalifa? Why would Allah tell the angels that he is going to make a successor to each other, progeny like Khalifa, on earth? A shaitan was full of anger. He was already full of hate. He was already full of presumptions. So he said, let's wait and see. So on that fateful day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to prostrate and he said, فَإِذَا نَفَخْتُ فِيهِمْ الرُّوحِ As soon as I inject and blow in him of my ruh, you make sujood. As shaitan had decided that was the straw which broke the camel's back. It was that the no going. Let me give you an example so that you feel the pain and maybe we will wake up to the fact that as shaitan is our enemy. Let's assume you are the CEO of this beautiful company. You are the chief uh, executive officer. You are the top uh, lady or to the top guy. Suddenly, the board of trustees elect another CEO, but they haven't told you yet. You just heard rumors that someone might replace you or someone might have a big role or more important role than yours. So you are extremely on your guard and your toes, like everything that the other person uh, does or something, anything you are there, you want to know for. Then one day the board of trustees tell you plain in your face that we actually are going to appoint this person here and he is going to be a CEO. How would you feel? Now, number two, not only that, but they will tell you from now on, you make him or her their daily coffee and you bring the newspaper on their desk. Would you do that? Every single human will go out of their skin rather than doing that. Well, a shaitan felt billions upon billions worse. 
because it is Allah who has chosen somebody else, not himself. And he had left in himself, if Allah gives a better status to this new creation, I will not respect this new creation. A shaitan did not prostrate. The conversation went with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, you hear, and I'm speaking about the Arabic, I don't talk about the translation because the translations are really appalling when it comes to subhanallah. But in any way, in Al Quran, Allah has reported in about seven surah, seven chapters, uh, the conversation that went between Allah and Iblis. His name is Iblis at that moment there. In these seven conversations, Iblis laid bare his action plan, his destruction plan, his demolition, his complete annihilation of mankind's plan. How is he going to hurt us? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept asking him questions. Allah knows. But why would Allah ask him? So that shaitan gives us what his action plan is. It's like you talking to somebody, a thief, and you won't at the same time question the thief in certain manner where he will divulge to you his action plan, how he breaks into houses so that people who listen to that will take heed and will protect themselves. So you ask him, how would you do that? And he goes, I do this and do this. And then you go, well, and what about that one there? And he goes, oh, I'll do this and this and this. You actually are not collecting information. The purpose of that questioning is that the other people listen and take heed about what's being said and done at that time there. And this is exactly why Al-Quran pinpoints that to that debate between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Iblis. Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as in Surah Al-A'raf. Surah Al-A'raf is Surah number 7. Interestingly enough, in that very same chapter, there is the covenant that Allah took upon us in the same Surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the animosity of a shaitan to us. A shaitan, once he knew he was doomed, says, Qala anzirni ila Iblis said, Ya Allah, give me life. And let me live until the day you resurrect them again. So I, he was asking for the longest life. And Iblis is by far the longest living creature now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply said, Inna min al -mudharin. You are of those allowed to live. Okay, you want that? I'll give it to you. And then Iblis said something further as a challenge. And subhanallah qala, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Iblis says, accusing Allah to have been the cause of his mischief, he said to him, Ya Allah, for what you have caused me to be misguided, I will definitely sit for them on your straight path. Imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, there is one bridge that goes from one end to the other end. And that bridge is the essential element that's going to get you to safety. Your home is on the other end. Imagine one day you're going to cross the bridge only to find a tiger. A tiger sleeping right in the middle of the bridge. How would you go through that? You can't stay where you are because you need to go to where you live. And you can't take any other route because any other way will lead you to death. Well, shaitan has promised that he would stand on the right in the middle of the path that leads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But was that enough? No. He said something extremely important. And this is what I want to now you to draw 1000 lines on it. He said, Thumma. لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجْدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ In English, as I said in this appalling translation, and again, let me say two words about the Arabic. I hear today people, they say, oh, this person or that lady or this man are following the Quran and the Sunnah. And then it's all in English. I'm sorry to disappoint you, that is not the Qur'an, that is not the Sunnah. That is a human's translated Qur'an and Sunnah. What you are following, as a matter of fact, is the understanding of another human. If you rely on translations, you cannot claim to be living on the Qur'an and the Sunnah. You are living on the translation to Al-Qur'an and the Sunnah. And these are two completely different ball games. But anyway... Shaitan says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ثُمَّ لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ In the English translations, what they say, Therefore, indeed, I will definitely come up to them from before their, them, their arms, their hands, and from behind, and from their right, and from their left, and you will not find many of them thankful. End of it. I've got here, right in front of me here, six uh, translations of the meanings, and all of them they say in front of, back, right, and left. But uh, does the Iblis really mean that, let's say, he's going to come in front of me or behind me to my right and to my left? Or does it mean something 
else. Well, as it turns out, it means a complete different something else. And this is why Al-Islam is so beautiful, the Arabic. When he said, لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, for example, in Ayat Al-Kursi, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ is whatever is whatever coming to you. That is the future. That is the future. وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ i.e. what is behind you, your past. وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ As I said the other day, the right side is always a representation of the good, the divine good side. وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ is the evil side. So here, the shaitan says, I will come to them for the future, to the past, on the good and on the left. What does that mean? Well, here is the, one of the tricks of shaitan, and I pray to Allah that you will pay attention. When shaitan comes to you, he will sit on the straight path in front of you. Meaning, he will create doubt about the future. If you want to donate money, shaitan will tell you you're going to get broke. Stop it. Shaitan creates doubts about the future, about believing in Allah, about the Qiyamah, about the Qabr, about the Jannah, about the Nar, about the resurrection. He creates elements and this is why people today, they run after the dunya, day in, day out, hour in, hour out, as if they were gone live forever. As shaitan is pulling the strings right in front of their eyes. You know what the shaitan does? You look at the front with your eyes. And the Akhirah, you look at it with your heart. What a shaitan does? For your eyes, he brings two coins of one penny each and he puts them right in front of your pupils. And because the pupils are the size of a penny, the penny will cover the whole eye and you will only see pennies. That's all you gotta see. Your eyes will only see pennies. And then he goes to your heart. And then he will create desires and love for this dunya. And instead of the heart being focused in the day of judgment, it becomes focused on this dunya. Misila salat, no big deal. Because the heart is concentrated in the front picture, dunya. So this is the front of you. So he will sit in front of you for whatever is coming your way in the future. He creates doubt and he creates a lot of issues. As for the past, he keeps you trapped in the past, living in the past. Remember the other day when I said that Rasulullah says, Do not say, لو فعلت كذا لكان كذا. Do not say, if I've done this, it would have been this. But say, قدر الله وما شاء فعل. That that is the decree of Allah. And whatever Allah has made, happened. When something happens in the past, a shaitan wants you to belie the qadr Allah, the decree of Allah, and makes you think like what happened in the past could have been averted could have been avoided. But because you didn't do that, look at this, and you find yourself sitting on a rocking chair called regret, thinking about the past, I shouldn't have done this, and I shouldn't have done that, and a shaitan makes you waste your time just thinking about the past. So that is when he comes to you behind the back. Also, another issue when he comes to you from the behind is if you have an issue about a member of the family, or some friends or something that happened and now is in the past. What the shaitan does? He keeps it alive. He keeps your past alive. You look at the person and you think, oh, you tell me I was abused when I was a child. Who wasn't? You say I was bullied. Who wasn't? You was deprived. Who wasn't? But you just chose to fall victim and pray to a shaitan because he keeps your past alive right in front of you. And this is what he does when he keeps the past alive in front of you. Guess what? You won't be able to concentrate on the future. This is why he promised he will first try to come to you and distract you from the future in front of you. If you are smart or you do it at one time, you are strong one time and you weak another time, when you are weak, he will come at the beginning in front of you. And when you are strong, he goes behind you. And an aymanihim. And on the right, what he does, he belittles the good deeds. If you want, for example, to do your dhuhr. Uh, no, the sunnah is, you know, to make wudu. He makes the wudu seem as if you have to walk from here to Australia to bring water and come back here. He makes it wudu like a huge task. If you want to donate five pounds uh, for donation, he makes the five pounds sound to you as if it's five million. If you want to do a fast, eight hours fast or seven hours fasting, he makes it seem like you're going to fast for a whole week. If you want to go do good, if you want, if you want, if you want to do something for Islam, he makes it seem like it's the end of the world. Today, people don't have time to listen to pep talks. Subhanallah, 10, 5 minutes. What do you spend it doing? Pay attention to yourself. You'll find out that you're wasting a lot of time doing so many other 
actions. And on وعن شمائلهم and on their left he belittles the evil. People say haram things on the internet. Hey, no big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People deny a salat. No big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People don't donate sadaqa. No big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People lie. Hey, no big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People backbite. Hey, no big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People stay ignorant in the religion of Allah. No big deal. Allah غفور رحيم. People spend 20 years and still can't read Quran in Arabic or understand few words here and there. Don't worry. You are Muslim. That's all it matters. That is a trick of a shaitan. Strangely enough, a shaitan in his, what we think is intelligence, when he is not intelligent really, yet in the four sites that he mentioned, the front, the back, the right and the left, he didn't mention two sites, the above them and the below us. Because above us is Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So anyone who has their feet firm on the ground of the worship of Allah will have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above him. Just like a building. If you want to live in a skyscraper, the foundation has to be extremely strong. And think of this foundation here as your feet. Really rightly and strongly grounded. Mashallah, you have knowledge. You read the Quran and you are very good at that. So you are firm in your iman. But the problem happens is, if the foundation is frail, if the foundation is weak, you don't even want to go inside that building. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't let shaitan control the bottom of your feet and the high with the relationship between you and Allah because that is a vertical relation between you and Allah. Shaitan cannot come through it. Shaitan can come only in horizontal. And horizontal is you in this life. That's the dimension. It's the 4D dimension. The front, the back, the right and left. Shaitan can affect you in that. But for the vertical relationship between you and Allah, he cannot. This is why. Pay attention to these tricks of a shaitan. Look in your life today. What it is that which side is a shaitan pulling you towards? Which side are you miserably failing on? Is it in front of you? Is the qiyamah so weak in your heart? Well, then he is pulling the strings on the front. If you are too much trapped in the past and you cannot move on and you are this and this justifying and living why you're miserable today because of the past then you know that the shaitan is pulling the back strings the behind your door if you don't, you're not doing too much good in your Islam and in this life then you know he is messing up with your right and if you are doing a disobedience to Allah and it's still not a big deal then know that a shaitan is pulling your left side is belittling it all I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this very short reminder will bring you back to reality that in this horizontal world where we live today, our back, our front, our right, and our left are totally and continuously challenged by Iblis. This is why, my dear brothers and my sisters, we need to protect ourselves. I strongly encourage you tomorrow to attend my class in Edgware Road at 7 p.m., And your strip station is Edgware Road, Central London. I talk about Salat. I talk about Wudu in a way that's going to change your life forever. Wudu will never be the same to you. And Wudu is the front first station in the fight against Shaitan. Come and discover how you can make it safe back to Allah. Is this possible? It is possible to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it possible to feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us? Of course. Come and I will show you how you can be happy in Islam. How life makes a complete sense. Come and you will enjoy what Islam has to offer. Let me tell you something before I end this talk here. Going to a class is never the same. Just studying at home or listening to a talk from home or something. There is something about you being physically present in some place. And I strongly encourage you to do that. It takes me about three hours to go do my talk and come home. But I do it every single week because Islam means the world to me. If you want uh, Islam to come to your home, well, look at yourself. How good of a Muslim are you? Food for thought. So let not shaitan sit in front of you, make the time seem big, not to go to seek knowledge. And behind you, keep you stuck in the past. Right, belittle the good deeds. And left, belittling the evil deeds. Don't let him mess you up. Again, this is your brother, Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. My dear brothers and sisters, do forward my number. Let people join our group. Let people learn about Islam. There is a great deal of ignorance. Again, my telephone number is 078-76-40-8735. 
This is your brother Abdus Salam Abu Hanifa. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik.